Boxing as we know it today developed from bare knuckle fighting, which is believed to have arrived in South Africa with the first British occupation of the Cape in 1795. Bare knuckle fighting was at first a disorganized combination of fist fighting and wrestling, often ending in bloody mayhem. But the fighter who could endure the most punishment and remain on his feet acclaimed as the victor. In 1880, the sport received some legitimacy with the introduction of the London prize ring rules, which also allowed the wearing of skin-tight gloves. At this stage, although gaining in popularity, the sport was frowned upon by most as a barbaric pastime. What it needed was a man of character, someone to give it respectability. Such a man was James Robertson Cooper. Cooper was born to a middle-class Scottish family in 1854. He showed great promise as an amateur boxer in England and sailed the seven seas as a member of the Royal Navy. He was something of a restless man. After several years as a mounted policeman in New Zealand, he travelled to Cape Town, where he labelled himself Professor Cooper, and opened a gymnasium to teach the finer points of boxing. Cooper eventually settled on the diamond mines of Kimberley in the mid-1880s. He quickly established himself as the best fighter, bare knuckle or with the so-called mittens on. Being an educated man for the time, Cooper felt slightly embarrassed about his fondness of a socially unaccepted sport, sometimes referred to as the noble art of boxing. He was far prouder of the play he wrote, entitled Modern Chivalry, in which he performed the lead role to high acclaim. Barney Bonato, a rising business tycoon of the time, was a lover of the stage, often performing on and off the stage himself. He also had a love for boxing. And with this as common ground, he attempted to strike up a friendship with Cooper. Cooper, or Jamie as his followers called him, was an unabashed snob, however, and didn't like Bonato's crude manner. The discovery of gold led the two men to Johannesburg, where Cooper became friends with Abe Bailey, an all-round sports enthusiast and entrepreneur of the time, and Bonato's main business rival. Bonato was furious at being snubbed and vowed to get even with the toffee-nosed Cooper. He decided to bring the highly rated bare-knuckle fighter Wolf Bendoff from London to put Cooper in his place. The 27-year-old Bendoff was a heavyweight by today's standards, while the 35-year-old Cooper would have been a welterweight. Under the rules of the day, height and weight were regarded as irrelevant. At first, Cooper didn't want to accept the fight, but he was placed in a position where he had to, to defend his title and his reputation by the general hysteria caused by Bendoff's public challenge. A purse of 4,500 pounds was set, winner take all. This is the highest purse ever fought for in the world under London prize ring rules. There was one more obstacle. Professional fist fighting was illegal in the Transvaal Republic. Due to the immense public interest in the fight, it was decided to approach President Paul Kruger for permission to stage the bout. Cooper's trainer, Tommy Harris, had a cordial relationship with the president. He was thus given the delicate task of approaching him. President, Harris began, there's a big Englishman in Johannesburg who boasts that he can thrash any man in the Transvaal. Kruger removed his pipe and surveyed Harris with a moody eye. Shoot him, he advised, and dismissed the subject summarily. Harris quickly told the president that such a hasty step was unnecessary, and after explaining the situation, 
Kruger agreed to let the crazy Eitlanders have their fight. Cooper was so determined to win against the bigger man that he set up his last will and testament. He was prepared to fight to the death. Interest was so intense in the fight that businesses and even the Johannesburg Stock Exchange closed down for the day. Eagle's Nest, south of Johannesburg. It was in this area that the first official championship in the yet ununified South Africa took place. 9.23 a.m., the 26th of July, 1889. The princely sum of five pounds a head was charged for admission. Corrugated fences were erected to keep out the unwanted riffraff. But uh, it helped little, as many scaled the fences to join the 500 paying customers. Cooper proved too fast and versatile for Bendoff, who could only plug away as best he could, trying to land the decisive blow. Under the prize ring rules, a round ended the moment a fighter went down. He then had one minute to resume battle, or be declared knocked out of time. Using a sharp left lead and drawing his opponent into fruitless and energy-sapping charges, Cooper gradually reduced Bendoff to helplessness, a bleeding hulk, half-blinded and pawing feebly in the direction of his tormentor. Two hard lefts to the jaw ended the massacre in the 27th round. Cooper was cheered by his ecstatic supporters and carried around the ring triumphantly. His fame spread beyond the borders of the Transvaal, and more than 20 years before its union, South Africa had its first national sports hero. Cooper rose rapidly in stature and achieved great successes as a businessman. He also retained his interest in intellectual matters, writing a well-received novel. Despite all his success, Cooper was a moody man, suffering from depression. He frequently withdrew into solitude. On July the 23rd, 1897, South Africa was horrified. James Robertson Cooper committed suicide. final resting place of South Africa's first sports hero.